This is the navigation drawer that we will be building today. Modern, smooth and powered by Material 3 design system. Ready? Let's go. To add the navigation drawer, we will use drawer property of the scaffold widget. And here we will use a new shiny widget called navigation drawer, which has a children property using which we can add our navigation items. But before adding any navigation item, let's hit save. And as we can see, the menu icon is getting displayed in the app bar. And if I click on it, empty navigation drawer is opening up from the left hand side. Now let's add some navigation items. To add the navigation items, we will use a widget navigation drawer destination, which has an icon and a label property. So let's specify those details. Icon start TV outline. And here the label property requires a widget. So let's use a text widget over here and specify the text as primary. Hit save. And as we can see, our navigation item is showing up in the navigation drawer. Now let's specify the other navigation items as well. Like this. Hit save. And as we can see, our navigation items are showing up in the navigation drawer. Next, let's add a header above the navigation items to display some information like the profile picture or the app icon, etc. To add the header, let's scroll above and let's add a widget over here called drawer header like this. And now let's go through it. Drawer header has a child property and for the child property, we are using a row widget. And inside a row widget, we are displaying two elements. First one is the icon and second one is the text. Now let's hit save and as we can see our beautiful header is showing up in the navigation drawer. You can design the header as you like. Next let's see how to respond to tabs and switch pages. Currently when I tap on these navigation items nothing is happening. So to make it working first we need to convert our start page from stateless to stateful widget. So let's do that. And we need to do this, it's because in Flutter, if you want to change the UI based on the user interaction, like in our case, switching pages, we need to manage something called state. And in our case, the state is currently selected navigation item. So to keep track of it, let's create a variable called current index. And let's assign a default value of zero. Hit save. Next, we need a list of pages, one for each navigation item. But instead of creating multiple pages, let's create a single page and just replace the text when the navigation item is selected. So for that purpose, let's go down and let's create a stateless widget called content page like this. And let's add a parameter to it, a name parameter like this called text. Let's create a final variable to accept that parameter. And now let's display this text at the center of the screen using the center widget. Let's add a child property to it and let's add a text widget which will just display the text parameter that we have accepted. Hit save. And now let's create a variable called pages like this. Next, let's go to scaffold widget and specify the body parameter. And here we will switch the pages based on the current index. Like this, hit save. And currently the primary navigation item is selected in the navigation drawer. And if I click outside to close the drawer, we can see the primary text is getting displayed at the center of the screen. It's because the current index is set to zero. But the primal text is looking very small. So to fix it, let's go to content page and let's specify the style using the text style. And let's increase the font size to maybe 24. And let's increase the font weight to bold. Hit save. And as we can see, it's now looking good. Next, let's go to navigation drawer and implement the on destination selected event like this. 
Here, the value represents the index of the currently selected navigation item. So, let's assign that value to current index like this. And let's wrap this inside a set state method so that whenever the current index changes, we can update our UI. Hit save. And now let's switch between the navigation items. But we are seeing two problems. First one, when I switch between the navigation items, the currently selected navigation item is not getting highlighted. And second, when I switch between the navigation item, the navigation drawer is not closing itself. Now let's click on the social icon and let's close the navigation drawer by clicking outside. And as we can see, the social text is getting displayed at the center of the screen. Let's select another navigation item, maybe snoozed and close the navigation drawer by clicking outside. And as we can see, the snooze text is getting displayed at the center of the screen. That means our switching pages part is working properly. Now let's fix the issues that we just talked about. To highlight the currently selected navigation item, let's go to navigation drawer and provide selected index property. And let's assign the current index to it. Hit save. And now if I switch between the navigation items, we can see the currently selected navigation item is getting highlighted properly. Next, in order to close the navigation drawer, when we select the navigation item, we will use something called global key. But wait, what exactly is a global key? Let's understand it with a real world example. Imagine you are sitting in your living room. The smart TV in your living room represents the scaffold, which holds everything on the screen. And the TV screen is like the navigation drawer where you see different channels. These are like the navigation items you can tap and the TV remote. That's your global key. You don't have to walk up to the TV to change the channel, right? You just press the button on the remote and the TV switches to the right channel. In the same way, global key allows our app to talk to the scaffold from anywhere and tell it to open or close the drawer just like pressing the buttons on the remote. Now that you understand the concept, let's put it to action with actual Flutter code. We will follow three simple steps to use global key to close the navigation drawer when a navigation item is tapped. So first, let's create a global key that can access scaffold state. Final global key scaffold state. This will act like our remote control and let's name it as scaffold key like this this line gives our scaffold a unique identity so that you can control it from other widgets it's save next let's attach this global key to our scaffold widget using the key property like this and now the scaffold is connected to the key just like pairing our remote to the tv hit save Next, let's go to on destination selected callback and here we will use the key to close the navigation drawer. Scaffold key dot current state. It can be null. So let's use a question mark over here. And here we will call a method called close drawer like this. And this line still the scaffold to close the drawer, just like pressing the button on the remote. Hit save. And now when I switch between the navigation items, we can see the navigation drawer is closing when I select the navigation item and our navigation drawer is now fully functional. Next, let's see how to customize the look and feel of our navigation drawer. Let's start with background color, which we can change using the background color property like this. Hit save. And as we can see, the background color of our navigation drawer has been changed. Next, let's change the selected navigation item color, which we can change using the indicator color property. Like this, hit save. And as we can see, it's now looking good. Next, let's change the icon when the navigation item is selected. For that purpose, let's go to navigation drawer destination and use the property selected icon. Let's specify the icon. Icon start connected. TV, it's save, and as we can see, the icon has been changed. 
Now let's specify the selected icon for other navigation items as well. Like this, hit save. And now if I switch between the navigation items, we can see the icon changes when the navigation item is selected like this. Next, I can open the navigation drawer by using two options. First, I can click on this menu icon to open the navigation drawer or I can swipe from left to right like this to open the navigation drawer. But what if I want to disable this swipe feature? For that purpose, I need to go to the scaffold widget and provide one property called drawer enable open drag gesture. By default, it's true. And let's set it to false. Hit save. And now if I try to drag from left to right, you can see I will not be able to open the navigation drawer. Sometimes we need to perform actions when the navigation drawer is open or closed. For that purpose, let's subscribe to on drawer change event of the scaffold widget. And let's implement it like this. Here, the is open property tells us whether the navigation drawer is open or closed. In our case, we will hide the status bar when the navigation drawer is open and display it when the navigation drawer is closed. So, let's add a if condition. If the drawer is open, then we need to hide the status bar, which you can do it using the system chrome dot set enable system UI mode method where we can pass the mode using the system UI mode enum. So let's pass that and let's use the value immersive sticky. And if the navigation drawer is closed, then we need to display the status bar. And for that purpose, we will use the same method, but just pass the different system UI mode. Here we will use H2H. Hit save. And now if I open the navigation drawer, we can see the status bar is not getting displayed. And if I close the navigation drawer, we can see it's now getting displayed. And finally, to open the navigation drawer from right hand side, just replace this drawer property with in drawer. Hit save. And as you can see, the navigation drawer is opening up from the right hand side. And just like that, we have implemented a fully functional, customizable navigation drawer in our Flutter application. And this is how the navigation drawer looks on Android. And that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Hit like and subscribe for more awesome Flutter content. Until next time, keep coding, keep learning, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coding.